All right, I think we'll get started. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley. I'm a software engineer um, out in Chicago. I work for Beyond Finance. Super excited to be here today at Data Nerd Days. Thank you all for joining me as I talk with you about taking advantage of New Relic to help monitor an application's health. Our team mainly uses Ruby and Rails, uh, so my examples in code will align with that. So what specifically are we going to be talking about today? Well, we are going to discuss what can be used that New Relic provides out of the box to help monitor application health. I'm going to walk you through how we set up and use custom events, then take you through how we use um, custom dashboards um, to display and chart some of that custom event data. And then we'll wrap this up with discussing workloads and the very exciting new errors inbox. So application health, why is it important? Well, applic application health is what drives businesses. Having technology that works is very important to most of today's company. Having effective application monitoring to detect any issues early on can help maintain um, resilient applications and happy customers. So we wanna maintain applications that perform, have adequate speed and response time, have features that work as intended and that customers can use successfully. So we wanna have all of these different areas monitored to make sure we're getting a good picture of application health. So New Relic is doing a lot of work behind the scenes in tracking and presenting data. We are particularly um, interested in technical observations via APN. So there were four golden signals that Google has identified as key metrics um, in your application to, to monitor in your application to deliver a good customer experience. New Relic makes it extremely easy to monitor these four areas, which are latency, traffic, errors, and saturation because they're already tracking them and then putting them into a chart um, so you can easily see how your application is performing in each of these areas. So now, what do we do on top of what New Relic provides? Well, we build out custom events. So custom events are useful to, um, in sending data related to prominent actions or features in your app that New Relic is not already tracking. So these are specifically useful for tracking actions with multiple entry points or um, in underlying services. So we create events and then um, we track those events through charts we make on our dashboards, which I'll cover that in a little more detail later on. But if you look at it over here, so this is our setup for events. We have our event name, um, which we like to follow action object or verb noun naming pattern to make it very clear what we are specifically tracking. So um, create password, log in, verify 2FA code, um, things of that nature. We then tack on um, some data, which includes a, su a success um, value with a, or success key with a Boolean value. So this is gonna tell us if, this, if that specific event was um, successful for our customer. So was that customer able to create a password, true or false? If they're not able to create a password, we wanna know why, why. So we tack on a fail reason with that as well. And then um, we also add additional data um, as in custom attributes that go along with that specific event. So for these events, we wanna make sure we're including high level of detail for analysis and um, adding attributes to events that will help investigate and add further, further insight into business and operational context. So let's dive into some code now. Gonna take you guys over to Um, an application that I created. So I created this really simple bare uh, lead gen application to show you how I may go about setting up events in an application. This app has two main features or actions. We have the user attempting to create a lead with some basic PII um, and their favorite color. So this hypothetical business I created for this app, um, uh, for this app is um, only services users with certain favorite colors. And then, um, sorry, if it if it is, uh, we will if we do want to uh, create a lead for our business and send that to um, send them on to another form page where we collect the user's address information. Again, in this hypothetical business I created for this app, um, we only want to service users in specific states. So, right now, um, so, so right now, which we can expand in our business. So we want to use an underlying service to check if the user lives in a state B service. So let's look at some code now. 
So I want to start high level here in application controller, and we have a few different things going on. In this send reporting method here, we are essentially setting up the template for events. So like I previously went over, we have our event name, our success key, fail reason key, and then here in this meta is where we're going to add additional um, data about this specific event. Here then, we're going to push all this data into a data hash. So we'll always have that success key value pair. And then if we have a fail reason, we'll add that onto there. And then um, if we have any additional data, we'll also add that into there. And then we're going to hold that event using active support notifications with our event name and our data hash. The other thing I want to um, draw your attention to here is these custom attributes we're um, building. So these custom attributes are going to give us some insight into specific customers um, coming to our application. So this device ID is going to re represent a user ID. And then we are also collecting remote IP, request ID, and a lead ID if it is present. We then use a current model here, which inherits from active support current attributes, which is something just Rails provides out of the box, which makes all of these values available anywhere in our stack, which is very nice. And we're gonna push all of these individual values up for some custom attributes. So custom attributes are, um, we send these up as custom attributes in New Relic, which are available on transactions and in error tracing. And we'll also push these into our events so we can do some further investigation and, um, and uh, looking into things if we need to. And then here in our notifications file, this is where we're um, actually building those events and then sending them up to New Relic. So for this specific, for this, um, specific application, we have a create lead and update lead event. Send in the name, so that's the event name that we send over, and then that data hash is going to become our payload. So we also are going to attach attach all those current attributes we have to the payload to send in um, each individual event. And here we're actually making the call up to the New Relic API with our name and payload. And then finally, so here's where we're actually choosing the data we send. So this is our leads controller. We have it creating our lead object here. And then we have it checking for um, the, co the, the color qualification here. So this is a outside service that we're using to check that specific color qualification. For this specific, um, for this specific action, we have one point of success and two points of failure. So what's important for creating events is that you're covering all those different um, paths that that event or action can take and make sure we're collecting data from whatever path it happens to go down. So in this um, specific event that we're creating, it was, a, it was a success. So we were able to create a lead, plus it was a, that user had a favorite color that we're able to service. So we're gonna have, go ahead and put an event name as create lead, success is true, and then we're going to add some additional data um, as the user's color. So in this situation, something in that check color service went wrong. So we're going to say that for our business purposes, we didn't, we were not able to create a lead. The success was false, and the fail reason was we're going to bubble up whatever error happened in this um, check color qualification service and put that as the fail reason. And then we'll also send the color. And then in this situation, just something unexpectedly went wrong. We weren't able to save the lead object or um, something else just happened to go wrong. So we want to make sure we're also covering this certain pa this path with event name, create lead, success, false. And then the fail reason is whatever specific error message we have there. And then we grab the color as well here. So now we have some solid events created. We're going to move on to how we use these events. So custom dashboards, really simple. We want to create a clear, easily understood visualization um, of that data we just collected from the custom events to quickly learn the state of our system 
um, and applications so we can do some faster and more efficient troubleshooting if that is necessary. So I'm gonna jump over to show you some of the charts we've built out in the dashboard. So I'm gonna start at the top here. So this chart, um, we utilize the NRQL funnel function. Um, so we were able to break our application down step-by-step step of how users should be progressing through and then track the number or rate of users who were able to complete each step until they reach the, de the designated end page. So our device ID is what's gonna um, represent a user ID. So we had five customers come to our site, five customers were able to get to our form page, five customers were able to create our lead, five customers went to our address page, five customers updated their leads. And then we see we have, we're having a little bit of a drop off here to get to our information page. So that's when we might wanna check out um, these charts down here that I've created with those specific events that we've sent up in our application. So we have a lead update chart here that's I created from our update lead event. And this is really simply just telling us, is that specific action successful for our customers, true or false? Obviously we want this to display a lot of true um, instead of false. And if it isn't displaying a lot of true, we then have errors here that we can look and see what may be going wrong. But we're getting a lot of people coming to our site that we can't service the state. And we also have a few errors that we might wanna look into and if we get investigate so we can give our customers a better experience. Um, this chart is um, additional information uh, that additional data I sent up. I was able to build this chart. So what's nice about these dashboard charts is that they don't always have to be, they don't only have to be used by engineers. These charts can also be used by PMs or um, different individuals in different uh, business departments as well. So you can build charts that they can come and gather data that they need from your application as well. And then this chart down here is just going to give us all the recent leads that have come to our site. And it lists out um, more data. So if there was an issue with one specific lead, we can get that device ID or we can get that lead ID and we could take those um, that data and do some further investigation on what particularly happened in that case. Okay, so let's move on to some more exciting things. Workloads. So workload really workloads really ties all these pieces together to provide a beautiful one-stop view of how our applications are doing. I found this um, workload feature when we started using errors in box um, because you have to build out um, your workload with any services or applications you want um, errors surfaced in. Um, so we were able to build a, a workload for all of our applications. Um, and what's nice about workloads is you're able to group and monitor all your services for your team responsible for in one view. You can combine charts New Relic offers out of the box then with your custom made charts and dashboards that are built from custom events data. So let me show you how we have our errors in box set up. Or our workload, I'm sorry. So I actually have um, workload, right when I log in, I have this workload um, on my home screen. So I can just click on that. Here you can add any charts um, New Relic is or New Relic provides. So we have response time, throughput, and error rate. And then I'm also able to add my dashboard here. And then look how my app is performing um, in those specific events. So within two, min two minutes of logging into New Relic, I'm able to get a really clear picture of what's happening with my application at this given time and how the health is looking. Okay, let's wrap this up with errors inbox. So we recently started using errors inbox and it's been a huge advantage for our team. It increases communication amongst our team. We're able to do faster management and resolution of errors. Um, and all of our application errors is in one location now. So we can see um, everything that's happening or any issues that may come up all in one spot. 
we use um, Eric's inbox a lot with our production support. So we do a weekly rotation um, for monitoring our applications in production. And we have recently um, used the Slack integration that um, Eric's inbox released. So we're able to have any errors that surface from our applications, new errors or errors that were previously resolved, and we're able to send those to a designated Slack channel. So then whoever's on production support can monitor that channel, um, quickly click on the error, or if a new error surfaces, click on that error, and that will take them to errors inbox. So let me show you how. So here is our designated channel for errors. We can see we've had some errors come in today. I'm gonna click that error. And it will take me to that error in errors inbox. And right here, I can immediately start investigating um, why that error has shown up. I can see our stack trace, I can view the logs, they have feature attributes that New Relic provides. I have my custom attributes attached to this. Um, so I can see what's happening. And then what's also nice is I mentioned we can increase communication with our team. So I can let my team know that I have started investigating this error today, submit that comment. Um, I could put, if. I found a fix for this. I can create a card in um, whatever Scrum service we're using and put that card in here. I can let people know that I have um, released a fix for this error. And then I could change the status of this as resolved. And if I want to follow this error, I can uh, set myself as the person that will look at this error, or this may, this error may be um, happening with a feature that another teammate has released. So I may want to draw their attention to this error so I can assign them as well to this error. So I hope you all have a better idea of how New Relic's out of the box tracking custom events, custom dashboards, workloads, and errors inbox can be used to maintain a healthy application and happy users. So does anyone have any questions or comments?